be right on the shot ball. It's right in the shot. Yep. Right. Hi there. Welcome to BSF Recovery Team. Well, it's time to take this axle apart now so we can build it for the wrecker. First thing we need to do is we need to get the springs off and uh, then we can tear it apart just like the other one. But uh, before we get at it, I want to uh, show you a few things about the bolts here uh, that we break. If you can see here, these are grade 5 bolts. These are the factory bolts and they are grade 5. The first time I broke these bolts on the wrecker, I did put some grade 8s in. And uh, they didn't last the weekend. Uh, grade 8s are a hard bolt and it's hard to shear them off, but they don't take any bending or flexing. And that's what we got going on, is we got a little bending and flexing. Uh, when our suspension articulates, this spring goes up. Uh, the leaf spring wants to stay straight. The axle's at an angle, so it twists on this bolt or flexes this bolt. And that's why we put the third bolt in. Uh, that's also why we stick with the grade 5s. Uh, the grade 8s, they don't take that, that flexing a little bit, and they shear right off. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the three bolt modification, we're going to stick with the grade fives, and we're just going to plan on doing maintenance. The last set lasted three years, so I figure if we replace them every year, a regular maintenance schedule, we should be okay. Alright, let's see if these come out, or if we're going to have to put some heat to them. Oh, look at that. Come out nice and clean. Now for the U-bolts. Hey, remember, I got this truck from Southern Illinois. So, it's a little bit better than the stuff around here. Doesn't get quite as much salt. Now for the rest of the stuff, we'll strip it down to a bare housing. Well, we didn't get lucky on the cotter pins. We'll have to drill that out later. just like we did on the other one. A little spring pressure on it. Huh, somebody put this together incorrectly. No snap ring on the inside. Thank you. 
spindle nut. Locking washer. Somebody did that correctly though. The pin's still there, it's not crushed. Remember, on the Dana 60, the brake anchor comes off uh, before the spindle cone. On your Dana 44 axles, the spindle, the spindle cone is on by itself, and the brake anchors are actually attached to the steering knuckle. Now it's time to take our spindle cone off. Normally on this one, as it hasn't been off for a while, I would use a spindle cone puller. But unfortunately, I look for it, and I don't know where it is. I don't know if I borrowed it to somebody and haven't gotten it back or what. So we're going to have to do the old school method of trying to get this spindle cone off without a puller. The best tool we found for that is a big plastic dead blow. And uh, the reason for the plastic dead blow rather than a regular hammer is you don't want to hurt this surface here where the bearings go on or the threads. So we're going to use the plastic dead blow. Hopefully we can... Uh, knock it loose enough uh, to pull it off. And it looks like we got lucky. If you ever find one of these underneath the spindle cone, that right there is an alignment shim. It means at some point in time somebody went to do a camber correction on this axle because the camber wasn't quite right. So this is a shim and it's thicker on one side and thinner on the other to tip the spindle cone up or down to uh, give you a little bit of change in camber to correct any uh, misalignment uh, issues uh, on the tires. So if you have one of these underneath an axle uh, be sure and take a look at it to see which way it's on and uh, put it back so you uh, don't change your alignment. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little mark in it uh, at 12 o'clock. That way we know which way to put it back on. You just do that with a chisel. Creates a little mark, a little line. So we know which way to put it back on. Alright, now we can pull our differential cover and get the fluid draining. I'm going to leave the top bolt in. That way when we take all the other ones out, our cover won't crash to the floor when we knock it loose. We won't have a big mess. Oh, look at that. This one's even still got the ratio tag on it. So, our ratio tag, it's a little hard to read here, but it says 41-9. That's 41 teeth on the ring gear, 9 on the pinion. You divide 41 by 9, and you come up with the 456 ratio, and it even says that right below it, 456. Still made a mess. Just a smaller one. <laughs> Okay, like I said before, we want to make sure that these we don't mix these caps up that hold the uh, differential case in the uh, in the housing. So I have my right and left my R and L uh, stamps here, and we will stamp those. Um, driver side is left, and we'll stamp that towards the top. Now we got an L there, 
And now on the passenger side, we'll put our R again towards the top bolt. That slipped a little bit. There we go. Now we won't mix them up. Now remember the carrier is under a little bit of preload on the bearings uh, so it's a little hard to get out of there. Um, they do make a case spreader uh, that actually uh, spreads the case just a couple uh, thousandths of an inch so you can pull that in and out easy and that's very handy for setting up a new differential. Um, we don't have one for the Dana 60 so we're going to pry this one out and then when we go to assemble it I'll show you a little trick on how to uh, still get it set up correctly and then add the preload uh, before your final assembly. Uh, something that you can do in your garage at home uh, when you don't have a case spreader. That was in there. That one was tight. A lot of preload on that one. Maybe even a little more than it should have had. Pinion nut. All right, let's see if we can get the pinion nut out. Now, when I pulled the other one off, I used the crossbar puller, and it occurred to me that uh, some of you might not have a crossbar puller. So, you can actually use a harmonic balancer puller if you have one of those. All right, this yoke isn't, uh, isn't the uh, threaded yoke with the straps. This is a U-bolt style yoke, so we're going to need some nuts for the bottom of these bolts. Now, we should be able to knock our pinion out. We use a hammer and punch this time. I uh, just want to make sure that we use a center punch uh, right in the center of the pinion here so we don't mess up the threads in case we want to use this pinion in some other axle. Should have had to catch that. Okay, well we have this uh, differential apart and bare like this. A couple of modifications I think we're going to have to do to this housing while we have it apart. Uh, we want to do that while we have it apart without any bearings in it uh, so we can wash all the metal shavings out. Uh, one is, is to uh, drill through the housing here for the wires for our e-locker and then the other thing that I was planning on doing is we're going to drill through right here and uh, tap it with a pipe thread tap that I have and put a drain plug in. That way we can uh, drain and change the fluid on a maintenance program uh, without removing the front cover. We'll do that in our next video. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, stay safe, and maybe we'll see you out there in the woods.